Hey, what is up everybody? Jason here. Today, I am really excited to share with you my latest Lego creation, which is this kinetic model of Artemis, the Greek goddess of the hunt, shooting her bow. It's all powered by a single crank at the base, which drives this sequence of pulling the bowstring and releasing it. And as you saw in the intro, it can actually fire an arrow, which I think is pretty cool. The arrow is just a piece of Lego flex tube with a slit cut into the end of it so that it can be mounted on the bowstring. The drawing and releasing of the bow just repeats as long as you continue to turn the crank, but if you want to shoot an arrow, you actually have to load it in manually each time. Before we dive into the details, I do have to give a shout out to a bow maker and YouTuber by the name of Delcat, who designed this brilliant wooden archer automata a few years ago. As soon as I saw his model in action, I just knew I had to try and build a version out of Lego. Of course, I wanted to dress it up a little bit as well, so I decided to theme it as Artemis. And she's often depicted with a deer by her side, as apparently that's an animal she considered sacred. So I added one to kind of hide the gearing at the base of the model. Now, I would have liked to have given her a more dynamic pose, but there's so much tension running through the body as the bow is drawn that she really needed to be solidly anchored to the base. So she basically just got a simple straight-legged stance. So how does this all work? We'll start at the base. As I mentioned, it is all driven by a hand crank or it can be motorized, as you saw in the intro. I actually designed the power source to be completely modular so that I can just pop out the hand crank module and swap in a power function motor, for example. I also designed a low profile module using a third party controller and motor, which has a completely self-contained battery and motor that can be controlled via Bluetooth. And this is the one I actually used during the introduction. The gearing in the base is just for reducing the speed of the input and it eventually just drives this simple piston which moves up and down. That piston is connected to this arm which drives the transmission in the shoulders. And if we remove the right arm we can see that all that's really happening is that the arms are moving up and down. There is some gear reduction in that shoulder transmission so the right arm travels through an arc of about 160 degrees while the left arm travels through an arc of about 60 degrees. You can also see that the head moves up and down in sequence with the bow via a simple linkage connected to the bow arm. The right forearm is mounted freely, but it is constrained by the stopper, so that it can only freely travel through a limited range. So as the right arm raises and the left arm lowers, this bar at the end of the right arm is pushed up into the bowstring. When the arms reverse direction, that bar gets caught on this half pin mounted on the string. So while the bow arm raises, the right arm will pull the string back. As the bow is drawn, the string eventually hits this horn, which guides it towards the body and pulls it off the bar to release the bow. For the bow, I'm just using these bars connected together with Technic axle connectors, and they flex enough to provide some decent bow tension. The string is anchored at the edge of the bow simply by being pinched between a stud connected to this Technic connector. And the half pin is just held in place on the string by sticking a lipstick piece into it. And that is pretty much it for this model. I'm really excited about this one. For a while I wasn't sure if I would be able to get it working well, but it eventually all came together. As always, thanks for watching, keep on building, and I'll see you in the next one.